Happy Halloween, lovelies. With Halloween fast approaching, I thought it was time to bring the Dark Queen out of Exley. This dark and sultry look can be used for anything from an evil witch to a thirsty vampire. To see how I pulled this wicked look together, keep on watching. To begin this look, I started with the eyes. I knew I would be using darker colors and just in case there was fallout, I didn't want to put on my foundation yet. I used a NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil and Black Bean as my eye base so that the black shadow to follow would stay deep and intense. Once the pencil was applied, I blended it out with my finger. And why not? It's the cheapest tool I own and the most versatile. This step may seem to be a bit messy, but remember that it is a base so it doesn't need to look or be perfect. Just make sure that the product is smooth and well blended so the shadow to follow has something to stick to. Next, take a black eyeliner as the base for the bottom lash line. I use Milani Liquid Eye in color 01 Black. Then take a small smudge brush to lightly blend out this color. Be careful not to drag the product down too much or you will end up with it looking messy and not sultry. You can use the excess eyeliner that you picked up on your brush to deepen the base on your lids. Using a flat shader brush, pick up any black eyeshadow you have and with the padding motion, apply it to the lids of your eyes from the lash line to the crease. Use the brush to create a soft cat-like shape with the shadow. Continue to pat lightly while working the color up and out. The same brush can be used to blend out the edges by wiggling the brush lightly back and forth. To really intensify the lid color, I went back in with a fluffier shadow brush to both pat on more shadow to the lid and to further blend out those edges. Now let's add the color. With the same flat shader brush as we used for the black, I picked up some Ben Nye Powder Rouge in Flame Red. Pat this color lightly to the edges of the black shadow we just laid down to warm up the eyes. Follow the cat-like shape we created with the black shadow and take the red from the inner corner of your eye almost out to the outer edge of your eyebrow. Just as we did with the black shadow, we will use a fluffier blending brush to apply more red above the crease. Use the excess product on your brush to blend out the edges. Keep tapping red shadow above the crease color and blending until you get the color intensity you're looking for. Because we are using two very distinct colors, you may have to go back and touch up each color after blending. Here you will see me going back in with that fluffy blending brush to add black shadow back to the areas that had faded. You may have to do this a few times during the application process to make sure that each color is thoroughly blended, but still vibrant. Next we will take a fluffy shader brush and dip it into white eyeshadow to use as a brow highlight. You can also use this to soften the edges of the red shadow. Next, I used a damp Q-tip to clean up the outer edge of my eye. I simply placed the Q-tip on my lower lash line and swept upwards towards my temple. This creates a sharp and edgy look to the outer corner of the eye. You can also use the same Q-tip to clean up the lower lash line. Next, we're going to elongate the eyes by exaggerating the inner corner. Using Urban Decay's 24-7 Liquid Eyeliner in Perversion, I lay the tip of my brush just over the tear duct and pull inwards. I do the same on the lower lash line and pull the liquid eyeliner under my lashes to catch any areas of skin peeking through. I continue the process until I get the shape of the inner tear duct that I'm after. To balance out the eyes and bring some depth to the lower lash line, I took the flame red eyeshadow and blended it over the black liner we had smudged there earlier. Make sure to softly blend this color from the inner corner all the way out to the outer edge of your eye so that you have a soft red glow around the entire perimeter. Using the black eyeshadow and a small smudge brush, take the eyeshadow and run it under the lower lash line. Look for any areas where skin is still peeking through and take that black shadow and fill in those areas. 
I use my black Milani eyeliner to fill in my lower waterline. To save some time, I applied my foundation off camera. This was the perfect opportunity to use that foundation that is way too light for me, but I was too lazy to return. Also while off camera, I applied a light layer of mascara and these super dramatic false lashes. These are a part of the Batwing lash set from Fright Night that can be purchased at Walmart. To sculpt the face, I took my Bahama Mama bronzer from the Balm Cosmetics to carve out my cheekbones and jawline. My face is pretty round and I wanted to achieve a more angular look. So I applied the bronzer to the hollows of my cheeks, under the jawline, and to my hairline to bring out the angles of my face. To do this, I'm using an IT Cosmetics sculpting brush to get a very precise placement of product and to blend it out. I'm really in love with this brush for contouring, although normally, I don't go this heavy with the bronzer. To really give my face that menacing look, I used the Ben Nye Flame Red eyeshadow as my blush. I ran this color just above my bronzer so that it looks like a combination blush and bronzer. It makes it look as though I spend a lot of time in the heat of the underworld. And of course, we need to add some highlighter to the planes of the face we spent so much time carving out with bronzer. To do this, I swept a bit of Mary Luminizer from the Balm Cosmetics over the tops of my cheekbones, down the bridge of my nose, and onto my cupid's bow to give a bit of shimmer to the areas so that will catch the light. Now we have to give the Dark Queen her luscious lips. To do this, I start with ColourPop Lippy Stick in the color Creature. I lined my entire mouth with this lip pencil to give the lips a defined border. I took a dry q-tip and smudged the lip liner inwards to give the lips more of an ombre appearance. I then filled in the rest of my lips with ColourPop's Bossy Lippy Stick. This lipstick glides onto your lips like butter and it has a wonderful matte finish to it. Once my lips were all filled in, I went back to redefine the outer edges with the ColourPop's Lippy Pencil in Creature. To finish off the look, I curled my hair in soft waves, threw on one of the many gowns I happen to have hanging in my closet, and dusted off my evil attitude. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to recreate this look, please save it to your favorites. As always, I would love to hear your feedback, so please leave a comment below with what you'd like to see next. I would really appreciate it if you'd subscribe and pass this video on to your friends. Please have a fun and safe Halloween, and remember to do something kind for someone else today. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Please visit my website for more details on the look you just watched, and check the description box below for more details on where to find me. Please click on the videos above if you'd like to see a Frozen Inspired Makeup Tutorial or Revlon Ultra HD Lip Lacquer First Impression. See you next time!